Today we're gonna to talk about APIs with rapid integration packages. We're gonna talk about it in context of verifying identities and scale. I'm Marat, this is Toli, and we're from Trulio. Thanks. So Trulio, we're a global identity verification company. Uh, we verify people through a data marketplace. We've integrated over 400 different databases of individual information across over 100 different countries. With this, with this massive trove of data sources, we're able to verify five billion people through one API, all in real time, across over 100 different data sources. And these data sources include everything from credit bureaus to carrier networks to public records, anything that's consumer consent um, that can help you verify your individuals that you're onboarding to your respective product. And why is this important in the digital age? Well, it's quite simple. It's knowing your customer. You are actually required to do it if you are creating a product that moves money from one individual to the next. And how do you do it? Actually, it only takes two steps. One, you have to know who the person that you're dealing with, so things like name, address, date of birth. And two, you have to make sure they're not a bad guy, make sure they're not on any known criminal watch list. So where does this become applicable? One, it's AML compliance. So if you are, uh, say, a marketplace and you wanna make sure you avoid um, bad guys moving money from one person to another through your marketplace, you wanna make sure you're checking people on both sides, of the, both sides of the marketplace, especially the person who you're sending the money to. Two, you, you definitely wanna do it for account opening specifically. So you don't have to do it at every login for KYC and AML. It's account opening. The first time you see a person is when you should be verifying them. And then account maintenance. Depending on which country you're from, one time, one time verification sometimes isn't enough. Across Europe, you oftentimes have to verify an individual annually and sometimes even biannually um, to make sure you know, they haven't joined the dark side or anything like that. And then age verification. So this one's pretty obvious. If you're selling uh, age-restrictive products, anything from tobacco to cannabis to alcohol in the works, you have to make sure the person's either over 18 or over 21. And we provide the databases to do that verification all in real time before you're able to, um, before you're able to sell a product with that restriction on it. And then finally, risk mitigation. So depending on if it's a, especially if it's a large transaction or a lot of times our clients will use it for first time transactions, to mitigate risk, they will verify the person upfront before they're able to transact on your marketplace or the service, or the service that you have. Um, and that's the API that we, that we offer through Trulio. Okay, so let's talk about APIs. Essentially there's two types of API, commercials and internal APIs. And these are completely two different type. Uh, internal APIs, you probably know who is the customer, you know what is gonna be the load of your API. You know pretty much everything, what is the technology used. When we talk about commercial APIs, when we do APIs for living, we don't know all these answers. We don't know how it's gonna be used, for what use cases, we don't know the client, sometimes we don't even talk to the client. And we, I, I wanna talk about uh, this use case today. So in the early days, this is the API lifecycle in, in a nutshell. In the early days, we're gonna be focused a lot about functionality. We have a business case and we wanna start selling the functionality. We wanna keep an eye open for the competition and the profits. And basically the name of the game is to cater to your customers. Your clients uh, have a need and we need to tweak our functionality uh, to meet the needs. When we tackle this problem, when we have our functionality ready for them, uh, probably our sales will start working and ramp up the scale, and scaling up is a usually very interesting challenge. Performance is up, we need to make sure that we, we can handle the, the, the load. We wanna make sure that the rela reliability is uh, up to the standard, and we're gonna have different integrations. So in the end of this stage, when we toggle scaling up, we probably have a perfect functionality and we have a perfect backend, everything is great, we are fine. Now the next stage is when you want your clients to integrate with you without any unnecessary pain. So you want quick and painless integrations and you want your customer success not to collapse under load of unnecessary calls. 
and basically what we are doing, we are meeting the demand. And this is a great problem to have. So that's what we are going to talk about today, about the challenges with rapid distribution. We prepared some examples from real life and we want to present them to you and discuss it in the context of, uh, of the rapid integration packages later. So here we're starting Java and Jackson. How many of you know what is Java? And what is Jackson? How many of you happy customers of Java? Much less hands, as expected. Okay, so let's talk about it. And well, the client calls us and call directly to the CFO, not to the customer success, and give us a rent. For the last month, your API is not working and we don't want to pay for the service. Wow, what, what happened? Well, we, this, this is definitely your fault. It's not my amazing San Francisco engineer's fault, so that's first off. Um, and it happened on March 33rd at 11.61 p.m., and we would like to, uh, to understand what, what was going on at that time. Wow, okay, so uh, luckily enough, we know that this is our release day. So uh, let's see, we are Isaac company, we can pull the code and, and see what actually happened. And we see that on this date, we added a field to uh, API response. And okay, so we know what happened. They probably don't uh, parse the new response. And we want to understand, maybe, maybe it's our fault. Maybe we did something wrong. So we go to uh, recommendations. If we will go to Google Cloud API, then uh, recommendations, we're gonna see that adding a field to a response message is actually a non-breaking change according to Google. Okay, it's just Google. Uh, let's see if Microsoft thinks differently. And in Microsoft API guidance, if the server returns something the client wasn't expecting, the client must safely ignore it. And this is not a coincidence that these two companies agree upon something for, for a change. And this goes back to this RFC 1122, a robustness principle. Be liberal in what you accept and conservative in what you send. This is pretty old RFC, dated to 1989. Um, some of the people in the audience were born after this RFC was released. And the internet working just great with this robustness principle. So it's great, this is not our fault, we're very, very happy and we know how to, how to fix it. So we can recommend to add this little JSON ignore properties annotation with ignore unknown equals true or for the whole application, we can add this little configuration or we can just say them to upgrade their spring version for version four. Uh, but it's not very helpful because we don't have the access to the client code and the client is still unhappy. We have another example, this time with the .NET and the HTTP client. Do we have uh, .NET users here? Awesome. Do you know HTTP client? Probably for REST APIs or in API days. So, um, a prospective client calls us this time. We've been testing the service and we saw that your API does not support more than two concurrent transactions. We are more than seven years on the market. That's probably not true. Uh, but we want to understand what is happening. So this client is using document verification. Document verification involves a lot of uh, decision making uh, and it's sometimes it takes about a minute. A uh, quick calculation, it's one thirtieth of transaction per second. We wouldn't be a sustainable business if that would be our performance. So let's understand what actually happens here. Uh, it, did it ever happen? Uh, did it ever work? No, never. Okay. And what, what you use? Uh, the best framework that there is, .NET, of course. Okay, okay, what Microsoft did wrong this time? Spoiler, Microsoft is doing fine, so is Trulio. So if we go back again to RFC, this one is a little bit more modern. This is HTTP 1.1. Clients that use persistent connections should limit the number of simultaneous connections that they maintain to a given server. How much? should use up to two N connections to another server or proxy. 
So HTTP client uses persistent connections. There's a very interesting article here, HTTP client best practices. It's a little bit different than in other languages. So I recommend everyone who is using HTTP client to, to, you, to actually read it. And uh, they take it very seriously. So they actually have just two parallel connections. So what can we do about it? We can just use configuration. We can configure the max connection to be 100 locally for this particular application or for the whole machine. A uh, quick question. Maybe somebody here thinks it's not a very good idea to do that. We're gonna talk about it later. It's, it's actually interesting and a little bit more complicated case than with Java. So again, as in previous example, it's very good that we know how to fix it, but we still don't have the control to client code. So third example is about web developers and a uh, course. Course stands for cross-origin resource sharing. This time a web developer calling us. I'm having a lot of trouble um, integrating with the Trulio API. We call API from the browser, but it's failing with the, with the core's error. Um, did you guys forget to configure something on the server side? So we already know where is it heading because actually we have a lot of questions like that. And we know that something is wrong here, but we're gonna ask anyway. So how do you store your, uh, how do you store the credentials? Well, I just hired this fresh engineer out of college um, and he decided we should store the truly API username and password in an encrypted cookie. Um, and when we call the, and we call the API with basic authentication. That's so the best it, approach, right? if it's encrypted, it's probably secure, right? It doesn't matter that it's on the client side. So uh, we would explain here at this point that storing API credentials on the client side is probably not a good idea and they should use a backend. Well, do you have a quick proof of concept I can use? I used Trulio before on my previous role and I'm bringing it into my new company and I wanna show how awesome it is so I can justify my big salary at my new job. <laughs> Unfortunately, you will need to implement a backend, but we are talking about front-end engineer here and they don't like to implement anything in the backend. So if only we had some kind of a basic implementation here, but we're an API company, right? We don't do web development. So another client left behind. So let's talk about uh, rapid integration packages. Rapid integration packages allows us to take the ownership in both on the client side and on the server side and make sure that these uh, issues could be resolved quickly without involving customer support or the CFO. So if we go back to the examples uh, with the faster XML, this class is actually gonna be implemented by us. And in the best case, it will be implemented properly in the first place. But if it's not, we can deliver the, the fix very quick, just through Maven. So problem would be solved very quick. In the case of .NET, it's a little bit more interesting. So this will not be a good idea because this RFC there for a reason and allowing our clients to have as many connections, as many open TCP connections to our servers is actually not very good for us. So what we wanna do, we wanna take this seriously and increase it to 16 and only to one URL. That's how we ensure that they have the number of connections that we approve. Of course, this is just a better solution. It's not a full control, it's just a better control. It's still the client side and they can do whatever they want. But at least they will have something out of the box. And in case of web developers and, and cores, maybe we should. Maybe we should allow developers that are happy clients to actually do us a great job and introduce our services to their new employees. It, whatever, it just takes one NPM package and one Docker. It's not a big deal. So let's talk a little bit about API consideration, API client considerations. What if I am a client, not an API provider, and I wanna think, do, do I actually wanna use your SDK? Do I wanna use your package? A lot of time, companies provide 
packages, but oops, but these packages are not up to date. They are they have unnecessary dependencies, or the poor code, or have lingering bugs. How many of you went to GitHub and saw open issues that are open for two years? Probably happens a lot. Uh, but it's still a good starting point. Even if it's something that is not maintained very well, it's a good starting point to start your integration at, because at some point in time it was good enough. But we need to be conscious. We need to see if this, AP, if this package is actually updated, if it's good, if it's up to our standards. I summarize a little bit of pros and cons, and I think I talked en enough about pros. I want to talk a, li a little bit about cons. So it will increase the cost of development. If we are developing in Java, and now we need to create packages in .NET and Ruby on Rails and JavaScript, that means that we need to hire more developers that know more languages, and it's hard enough to hire people, especially here in San Francisco. So you probably need to have some kind of a mature development organization. The testing complexity increased dramatically. Instead of just your, uh, your API, now you need to test every package, every client side. And I would say that it's practically impossible to do it manually. So we need some kind of a continuous integration and continuous deployment with, the, uh, with good automation. And of course, if we talk about CI, CD and automation, that means that DevOps should, in, should be mature. Uh, but as I said, this is a good problem to have. That means that we already tackled all the other problems and now we want to rapidly increase our influence and we want to deliver our API. So to summarize, taking ownership on the client side will create some opportunities for us and will be beneficial for both our clients and ourselves. I'm Marat, this is Tolly, and we're open for questions.